Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone, uh, teachers and educators joining today from different parts of the world. Uh, so my name is Pio Wedun. I'm a teacher from Myanmar. I'm currently doing my MA TESOL here in the UK. Today, I would like to show one of the accessible approaches to professional development that I have been trying it out for like several months and I found it quite useful. So I decided to show this topic with you all today. Uh, so today there will be five main parts in today's presentation, starting with some introductory questions and then going to uh, talking about talking a little bit about CBD framework and then moving to the main part of today's presentation that is cooperative development. And then concluding the session with some suggestions and recommendations from me and then giving the floor to you to ask questions uh, or suggestions if you have. So now let's go to the some introductory questions for you today. Uh, so be prepared to type in the chat or comments. Feel free to uh, communicate with us. So um, here is the first question for you. How do you understand the this word CPD? What is your own understanding of this word? Your own definition, if you have. Okay, um, continuous professional development. Okay, excellent. Okay. So we have our own understanding of this uh, term, CPD. Um, so now let's move to uh, another question. Do you think, here is a question for you again. Do you think it is important for you or for teachers in general? CPD, continuous professional development. Do you think it is important for you? You can just say yes or no, but it would be great if you could show why do you think it is important for you? Uh, if you don't think it is not, it is important, you can just say, uh, why don't you think it is not important? Okay. It seems like, um, yes. Okay, learn is endless. Excellent. We learn new things from each, from each other. That's a great um, reason, yeah. Okay, it is important to upskill. There are always new information and new things to learn. Thank you very much for sharing. Okay. Yeah, it's not just for students. We also need to develop. We also need to improve ourselves. Thank you very much for sharing your answer with me. Um, so we have our own understanding of CPD and we have our own reasons of doing CPD. Here, I would like to show um, my own understanding of CPD. Um, so we can say continuing professional development, continuous professional development, but I would like to take the word continuing professional development for some reasons I'm going to give here. Uh, so here I take um, from an article written by Steve Mann and Katie Webb about uh, teacher development or continuing professional development. So they said teacher development is always a case of becoming. I left the word becoming. It's not a kind of a product, it's a kind of process. So that's why I always uh, say to, um, if I have a chance, I always say to others, my colleagues, that I'm always trying to be a teacher. Whatever my own my experiences are, my teaching experiences are, I always say that I'm always trying to be because I take it as a process. Uh, we still need to learn a lot. So we are in the process of becoming a teacher instead of being a teacher. I take this word um, to refer to the continuing profession and development. Uh, here, there might be some of you might be uh, might not agree. Uh, here is another uh, statement. The ING, as you can see, in continuing 
and becoming is as important for 60 year olds as it is for 21 year olds. So how do you think of this uh, sentence? Do you agree or disagree? You can you can type it in the in the chat again. Um, agree if you agree. Um, as usual, can you give me a reason of why do you agree or disagree? For me, I totally agree with this statement um, because when I started to work as a teacher, I thought that after two to three years, I might not be I might not need to study anymore because I'm I hope I thought that I will know um, the teaching methods. I will know the subject I'm teaching, the language I'm teaching. So I thought that I will not be, I don't need to study anymore. But actually after seven years, seven years of teaching experiences, I still need to learn a lot. Every day um, I've got a new challenge, <clears throat> sorry, from my student. Um, so there has been also updates in the field I'm working. So I stay need to improve myself. So I agree with that. The ING is important for, let's say, experienced or uh, the novice teachers. So I, I agree with the statement. Okay, thank you for sharing. So there are also some insightful co comments and chats. Okay, so now, um, that's why I would like to say that a good teacher is always engaged in professional development activities or professional development programs. They are interested in their own professional development and they are collaborative. So that's how I understand about the continuing professional development CPD. So if you want to know more about CPD, um, I would like to recommend to um, to read this CPD framework for teachers by the British Council. Um, so in this framework, as we can see here, there are 12 professional practices. And for each professional practice, we have different stages of development. And all the professional practices are leading to the quality in our classroom. So, this is a good framework. So there are 12 professional practices, for example, like planning lessons and courses. And for each practice, we have got different stages of development from studying from, for example, you have heard about lesson planning, but you don't understand, but you don't know, but I don't know why it is important and how to plan, how to plan lesson so in that case, my stage of development will be in level one. So the same go with other professional practices. Um, if, I, if I know very well about the managing the lesson, and if I do it in my lesson planning, in my teaching, and it might be like the engagement, stage three. So here, one more uh, request for me to type in the chat again. You can choose any professional practice here, one, two, and then can you can you give a number to your professional practice that you are that you are doing or that you're engaging? So for example, for me, like for um A, planning lessons and courses, it will be number two. I understand it. I know why it is important, but I don't use it in my classroom, for example. So in that case, um, my stage of development will be two. You can just type the letter and the number, or if you want, you can type the whole sentence. Okay. Type, can you please type in the chat too? Okay, here's come from Mary, uh, Jay, understanding multilingual approaches. Excellent. Stages development two. Uh, Gladi, knowing the subject one. So thank you very much. So we have different professional practices that we know 
and we have different stages of development that we are in. Thank you. Okay. So if you want to know more about this framework, um, so there is also a link in the results session. If you're joining Zoom, if you're joining Facebook, there might be a link in the comment. Other, if you couldn't find them, it's quite easy to find it. You can just type CB in the Google uh, CPD framework for teachers by the British Council. There also another framework, which is for teacher educators, but this one uh, is for teachers. So today I'm not focusing on all the professional practices today. Uh, it seems like quite a, um, quite a number. So today I'm going to focus on one of the professional practices that is, <clears throat> sorry, taking responsibility for professional development. So that is also the theme of um, our webinar today. So in well, this professional practice of taking responsibility for your professional development, it also have uh, many resources available on Teaching English uh, British Council website too. You can also find um, the link in the result session again, or you can just type this topic, taking responsibility for professional development. So when we say taking responsibility for your professional development, the word professional development is good, but when we say taking responsibility, it seems like a big word. We have to take responsible, we have to, we are responsible for that. So it seems like a big word. Um, that's why I decided to show today's presentation, today's topic, which I find it um, less stressful compared with other professional development approaches. So here, when you are taking, to be able to take responsibility for your professional development, you might have already been taking responsibility for your own professional development. So what kind of professional development activities are you engaging in now? or have you been engaging for a long time, or you did like um, years ago, months ago, days ago. So for example, it might be collaborating with colleagues and other professionals, or maybe doing yourself, doing reflection, reflective practice yourself, or doing teacher research, classroom research, or like we are doing now, attending and presenting at conferences. Or it might be participating in training, former training that you need to uh, participate in uh, according to your organization you're working in. Or you, it might be reading academic or uh, the journals or writing it yourself and publishing out uh, your own book or joining teacher associations is also part of your professional development activities. So I like to recommend joining teacher association. You can start joining your local teacher association and then you can move to your regional and then to international teacher associations. It's also the best way to start for your professional development. Or it might be observing other teachers' classes or your class being observed or you might have your own professional development activities. Here again, uh, can you please type the activities that you're engaging in in the chat? So you can type the whole phrases or the activities that you're engaging in, or you can just type the letter. Collaborating with um, colleagues and other professionals, a lot of A here. I can see B, T, E from Hernandez. Attending conferences, exactly that we are doing now. So um, it's also part of the professional development activities. I have a regular PD day twice a year from school for all the teachers. That's good. Uh, injection program rescue. Oh, okay. 
Excellent. Uh, I like the word you say, needing more to develop myself. Self, the word myself, our self. That's also part of uh, today's presentation. Something we can do um, ourselves. Thank you again for sharing your ideas and the, your activities in the chats and comments. So now let's go to uh, some of the challenges because when we say these activities, they sometimes come with challenges or difficulties. So what kind of challenges or difficulties do you have to be able to do for your professional development? It might be because of time constraint. Usually we are quite busy with planning for the lesson every day for uh, our classroom. And it might be like other workload from your school. So you might not have enough time to do for your CPD, for your professional development. If you have time constraint, you can just type again in your challenge or difficulty in the comment or chat session. Or you might have financial constraint, financial co constraint. Um, usually, especially when the teacher training courses are quite expensive, we couldn't afford it. It might be like this, or it might also be because of the location. Uh, for example, there might be uh, teachers from some rural areas. They might not be able to join professional development programs or for at big cities. Or in some areas, they might not get access to the internet. Why we can join the conferences or webinar like today, they might not be able to join because of the uh, location constraint. Or it might be because we couldn't get access to the resources necessary for our profession and development. For example, like access to, access to the library, books, academic journals, or you might have your own difficulties or challenges. If you feel, if you feel okay, if you feel okay to show your challenge or difficulty, feel free to show in the chat or comments. If you're not, it's okay not to type it in the chat. What other challenges do you have? I'm interested in knowing what kind of challenges we have, our own challenges and our difficulties. Time constraint, location, school constraint. Okay, thank you. Uh, we teach around six or seven classes on average a week. Mm, that's a big um, number of classes we have to teach. Yeah, uh, okay. It also find it difficult, even myself, I also find it like uh, teaching the whole day, commuting to my um, college every day. Is, I also find it quite difficult to find a time for uh, my own professional development. Yeah. Time, friend, no one have the same level of interest to organize community or practice. Yeah. So it might be our motivation to join. Okay. Time constraint. Okay. Funding time. Thank you again for sharing your um, challenge or difficulty in the chat and you stay with me. Okay, thank you. So um, today, I hope after today's presentation, uh, despite these difficulties, you will able to, you will be able to find um, some way to do for your own professional development. Like one of the chat from from you, like myself, develop myself. So I hope you can do it. So today's topic is about cooperative development. Um, today I would like to focus more on my own experience of doing it. Uh, so. Before I show, I talk about my own experience, but let me talk a little bit about this again. So as a NGO, cooperative development, like cooperative, so we need to work with other teacher or other colleague. So we need, uh, it's like working together with one or more colleagues to develop as a person who teaches 
in our own terms. Here, I like this phrase, our own terms. It's not like taught down that it's, a, it's not a kind of mandatory um, training that we have to do. It's like we decide ourselves to do it and it is for ourselves, for our own development. So we can do it in our own terms. So that's one good thing about this um, professional development approach. So for now, I would like to say, I would like to call CD so that it's easy to refer to instead of cooperative development again and again. So firstly, um, why this cooperate, what's this CD um, is based on, what, which theory is based on? So usually um, it's like there are two ways of learning that we have been doing that we already know. Uh, we learn intellectually the first way of learning we learn intellectually we learn by reading books we learn by attending classes we learn by going to university we learn intellectually and another way of learning is we learn through our own experiences for example if uh, as a teacher i also learn through my experiences of managing my classroom so i also learn through my own experiences so these are the two ways of learning we have been familiar, we have known for a long time, but CD is based on another way of learning. It might be strange, it might be strange, quite strange for you. Um, so we also learn through speaking. It's quite strange, right? Um, so it means, why we try to speak, why we try to express an idea or a problem, why we try to say it out to others so that they can understand what we are saying. We also learn through this process of expression of our ideas. We articulate the ideas before we speak out to others. So like what I'm doing today, so. Why I learned about CD, I know a little bit about it, but when I decided to talk about it to you, to the audience, so I also learned why I am talking too. So CD or cooperative development is based on this idea of learning through articulation of expression of our ideas. So that seems interesting. Um, so we learn through speaking. So how can we do CD sessions? So that is one of the big um, benefits of this approach, I think, because we just need only two people to start to do this professional development, speaker and the understander. It seems like simple and easy, but we also need to be careful about, you might see uh, some uh, adjective here, non-defensive and non-judgmental. So non-defensive speaker and non-judgmental understander. So these two words, these two rules are also correlated. So the speaker has to be non-defensive means the speaker had to speak um, openly without holding any um, details or ideas, without any secret. They need to talk openly to the understander. So for the speaker to be able to speak openly, because mostly what the speaker is sharing is about like kind of problems or issues they have. So the understander has also need to be a non-judgmental understander. The understander doesn't need to give any judgments or suggestions, feedback, comments, criticism. Instead, the understander trying to facilitate the speaker. So, if the understander is like kind of judgmental person, the speaker might not open their problem or the issue. So that's why we also need to learn about these roles if we decided to do this development session. So a non-defensive speaker, the speaker, how the speaker learn, how the speaker do uh, for their professional development. So there are three main processes the speaker pursue, the speaker explore um, through speaking, just talking about the, the problems or issues, or it might be 
Um, so through the exploration of it, the speaker might discover possibly the root of a problem or the solution to the problem. So for example, if the speaker is uh, exploring about wine, the students are not interested in their lessons. So the speaker might discover the root of a problem, the reason why they are not interested, or the speaker might have the solution for this problem. If they have found out the root of a problem or solution, they might have a plan for the action. So this is the, the development process that the speaker goes um, within the process, within the section, within the CD session. So that the speaker can follow this process, the, the facilitate, sorry, the understander need to facilitate the speaker. Why the understander facilitate the speaker? The understander needs to have some, needs to follow some rules. So firstly, the understander need to show respect to the speaker. Like I said before, so it's like sharing problem or issues. So they need to show openly. People show their problems or issue only when they, they feel that the other person kind of paying respectful to them and they have to show empathy. Mostly, most of them are problems or kind of negative feelings. So we have to show that we also feel that way. We have to empathize, sympathize with them. In doing so, offering respect and empathy, we need to be sincere about it. So these are basically some of the um, roles we need to take and some of the um, rule protocols that we need to follow if we are if we're about to do the cooperative development. So the process of exploration, discovery, and action for the speaker is facilitated by the understander by following several moves. There are eight moves here, starting with attending and then goal setting, trialing, and then making a plan for the next CD session. Uh, so let's go on to talk about each of the moves because these moves might be a little bit, it's like abstract, so for now, uh, I would like to start with um, attending. That is the first move we need to do. Is uh, so for attending, as you can see in the picture, as this is what I did um, with my friend um, in my university. So I'm quite serious here, as you can see my eyes, eye contact, face, body, and gesture. So I'm quite serious. I'm paying attention to the speaker. I am, here I'm taking the, the role of an understander. So in addition to our physical gestures, body, eye contact, we also need to show um, empathy through our heart, mind, and spirit. So it, the first stage, this, I think it is the most important part. If the speaker don't feel they are listened to, they are well listened to, they might not speak, they might not talk about their problem or issues, then it might not be a good process of uh, professional development. So the next move is about helping the speaker to reflect their problem or issue, what they are saying. So is uh, for this, the understander need to do is just recap or uh, recall what the speaker just said. For example, the speaker talk about uh, the problem in their classroom. So as an understander, I would just uh, recap what the speaker just said. So according to my understanding, uh, what you're saying is you have got a problem in the classroom and you think the problem is um, because of the time you are teaching. So we might re recall what the speaker just said. In that case, the speaker think it is not like this. They might try to explain it more. The more the speaker try to explain the kind of um, development the speaker will be able to get. So this is the reflecting stage. This is part of um, what I have done. And after reflecting, so uh, the speaker like have been talking about 
several ideas. It might be like two to three areas of focus. So here we, as an understander, we need to help the speaker to get it focused. But the understander doesn't, doesn't decide what to focus for the speaker. It's on the speaker. But we need to show the speaker um, that they need to focus on something. So we can signal then by using languages like this. So you talked about um, classroom management and um, a classroom engagement and time problem. So is there anything that you would like to you would like to talk more that you would like to talk in details? So because we couldn't focus on several ideas at one sitting, so we need to get a focus. But the understander never decide what to focus. So after focusing, the speaker is going deeper, deep dive on an issue, a single issue. After talking about that single issue, so we need to make another move. This move is called thematizing. Thematizing like thematizing, trying to help the speaker to get a theme, to get a connection between the ideas they have been talking. So it's basically, uh, for example, if the speakers, uh, if as understander, if we think there might be some connection, we just signal the speaker. So I hear you saying um, the time problem, the time you were teaching students are tiring at that time. And you earlier, you said the, uh, the lessons are not interesting. So do you think any connections, do you think is there any connections between these two things? So we are trying to help the speaker to find the connection. So why the speaker trying to find the connection, trying to talk more about it, so the speaker will learn better about the issue or problem they are focusing. The next stage is called challenging. It's quite similar to thematizing. So, um, but sometimes, when the points or the ideas the speaker is saying are like kind of two um, contrasting point, so we might say we might call it challenging. If they are same, we might say thematizing. Basically, so they are similar. So it depends on what the speaker is saying. So after we have done thematizing and challenging, possibly, so the speaker have um, talked about issue their issues in that case we might need to help the speaker move to goal setting stage so um, for example after they have talked about after they have find, found out um, the root of a problem of students and not student lack of interest in the lesson so what kind of clear goal what kind of goal would you like to set for this problem so the speaker might say okay, to include more in engaging and interesting lessons, activities in my classroom. So that is um, the speaker's goal. So after this goal, we might move to the trialing. Trialing is uh, making a plan for the goal they have set out. So if you have that goal, what would you like to do next? What do you think you are going to do next? So we're just talking, so we might not be able to do it now, but we're making a plan for what we're going to do, uh, what the speaker is going to do next. So the speaker might say, okay, firstly, I will go to the British Council of Teaching English website, and then I will find some interesting um, activities that we can do with teenagers. And then I will make a plan um of including these activities so the speaker is just saying it out the plan for the action that she's going to hear they they are going to implement in the classroom so that is that would be uh the end of the uh cd session but it's better to make a plan for the next cd session if the speaker feel that that session is useful. Otherwise, we might not make a plan for the next session. So it depends on the speaker. 
So that's all um, the move that we can do for the CD. As we, as I said before, it might be a little bit abstract here. Um, so according to my experiences of doing these different moves, different moves, I so I found that we sometimes um, they are not kind of going step by step. Sometimes we might not need to go back to the uh, another move. For example, while we are thematizing a move, we might need to go back to focusing or reflecting. Or every CD session that we did, so we might not be able to cover all the move in a session, in a single session. So it might be like we might be going around at focusing stage and then we end the CD session. It's totally fine. We just, it doesn't necessarily mean we have to do all of them to, um, in every session. So uh, if you think it seems like quite possible for you, so we can do it face to face. Just introduce this to your friend or to your colleague, and then you can do it face to face by setting aside like um, 30 minutes or one hour. Uh, it's better to start with like 30 minutes and then you can do face to face or you can do online if, if you think it is um, feasible for you. Or you can just do like giving typing chat or uh, through emails. There are also several studies that has been done by doing in different ways. But I prefer personally prefer doing face to face, talking in person, so that we can pay more attention and doing uh, online face to face. I have done both a uh, face to face in person and online. So, although it seems like quite simple to do it, of course we have got challenges. Um, so for me, as you can see in the picture, I'm taking the role of the understander. But as you can see, um, so I couldn't hold myself giving suggestions to the speaker. So that would be one challenge for the understander because um, we're not supposed to give any feedback or suggestion. But what the speaker is saying is quite uh, familiar with what I have encountered before. So I want to give suggestions on it, but we have to hold it. We have to put our opinions or ideas back at the stage. Uh, so the frustration we have that in that case, uh, we tend into kind of satisfaction after the session when we learn that that's helpful for the speaker. So it's also, challenging for speaker because as a speaker I as a speaker I say a lot but I don't receive any feedback any suggestions so it seems like quite different from our normal conversation where we are supposed to um, talk in it um, giving feedback or advice but here it's not so I felt quite weird not to receive any feedback but like Julian had said so why the speaker trying to adapt this challenge or change, the speaker is learning how to articulate the ideas better. So it helps the speaker to develop. So uh, my experiences of doing it as an understander, when I receive a finer comments from the speaker that I'm clear now, after our CD sessions. I know what I have to do now. I feel like that, yes. So as I understand now, when I receive the feeling, the, the satisfaction I got is a kind of energy for the next CD session. Also as a speaker, when I did CD sessions with my friend, I was struggling with uh, my research proposal um, for my dissertation. But after four CD sessions, it's turned out that this um, is Tana. This I I was able to manage to what to do next. I know what to do next. So it's uh it's not like giving a proposal to me, but it's help it helps me to get an idea of what to do next. So finally, um, if you plan to do CD, I would like to recommend. I would like to give some suggestions. 
the first thing is quite simple, but it's always better to familiarize yourself, yourself with uh, the roles and the process you need to take. And then during city session, you might um, not be um, able to continue to do it because of some frustrations. In that case, it's okay to step out of the CD and then give comments to each other. For example, if you are a speaker and if you don't feel that the, the understander is listening to you, you can just stop there and then give a comment on it, step out of CD. And the next one is silence. Silence is also uh, uh, a good period in a CD session. Usually we try to fill the silence by small talk, but in a CD session, um, the silent period will have the speaker to articulate the idea better. And lastly, um, it's always good to do reflection on CD, as my friend called CD on CD, to find out what went well and what went wrong. Okay, so uh, CD or cooperative development is not to replace any other kinds of professional development approaches, but it's a kind of additional spice to you for um, to make your uh, meal delicious. So let me conclude. Uh, sorry, I think, um, okay. So uh, the final one, let me get back to the topic of today, the title. I said accessible approach. Is it? I think it is this approach accessible because we just need only two people to start. So it's quite accessible. I said professional development. Is it really kind of professional development approach? I think it is because it also involves the main process of professional development, collaboration, reflection, inquiry, and planning for action. And I said for teachers, so I will leave this for you. Do you think it is for you, for teachers? Thank you very much. Uh, that's the end of my presentation today. If you have questions, feel free to ask me in the chats or comment. We have a couple of uh, questions for you. Yes. Um, Ryan is asking about the partners that you could have for this kind of uh, this kind of cooperative development, and is there some who who would be an ideal partner for this kind of session? Um, okay, for doing um, CD CD partner choosing the partner is also like um, very important. That's a great question. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, so it should be, uh, it, it's always better to stay with someone you know. So it can be your colleagues. Um, so it's always better to stay with someone you are familiar with instead of studying with a stranger. Um, and then the, your partner should know about the roles, the roles you need to take as understand that what they need to take or as a speaker, what um, roles they need to take. And then you can start it. I think then it will be okay to start. Yes. Okay, good. Thank you. Also yeah. asked about, uh, you answered in the session about time. So yeah. like you could start with 30 minutes or one hour. Yeah. Think weekly, what's the kind of the best idea for like sort of planning a schedule for something like that? Thank you. Uh, so for time, it also depends on uh, the the individual, the speaker and the sender, and then the context, and then the problem or the issue the speaker want to explore in that session. Uh, so there, there is not like a kind of standardized time, but it would be great to um, start with like around about 30 minutes, 45 minutes. If it takes too long, then sometimes um, you might not have nothing much to explore so it's only I've, according to my own experience of doing it it's only uh, good to be around like 30 to 40 minutes mm. I think when this kind of dialogue starts happening I think it'd be very easy for teachers to just keep talking and sort of discuss yeah. things at length and then probably taking quite a lot of each other's time which it yeah. might fruitful discussion but it might sort of take up quite a lot of time so when yeah. you have these when you have these kind of discussions uh, with the teachers do you keep these these steps these these sort of focusing and thematizing do you keep these steps in front of you 
when you're having the discussion so you can sort of pinpoint each one because I imagine it's quite hard like you said to maybe give some advice or yeah to stop yourself doing that to give some advice so do you exactly. think it's a good idea to keep the steps and go through them one by one yeah exactly it's uh like uh so like I said we need to familiarize ourselves but whatever we have done this we forgot when we uh when we start the real session so uh what I did it uh yes I um write a list of these moves and put beside me uh as an understander why, why I took the role of an understander and then uh I, I I need to check it again and again first, like first two to three sessions. But after two to three sessions, it's things like um, the development is also like uh, not just for the idea we are exploring. It also uh, about the process. We know better about the process after three sessions. So I don't need that uh, kind of move right beside me. So I can do it myself then. Um, but one important thing is uh, we don't need to, uh, it doesn't mean we have to do all the moves. So sometimes it depends on the speaker. So we might just stick around only one move in a single session. That's also fine to do it. Thank you, Amy. Yeah. I think that's the important point that is coming from the speaker. The speaker really should be the person that's in control more of the... Yeah. Of the discussion yeah exactly yeah it, it's totally depend on the speaker yeah how do you think um so also malin is asking how long should the entire process be which is one good question about how like sort of how many sessions to do because i think when we're dealing with professional development it can feel like a never-ending road yeah to, uh improvement so how do we what kind of milestones or how many sessions should we plan so uh personally uh, i like to do it um is never ending like you said <laughs> Be because it's not like uh it's a little bit different from normal professional development or teacher training programs so it's on our own so we have problems or issues every day in our class. So we might explore one problem in one session and we might continue to do it in the next session. The after three to four session, we usually, usually um, the speaker found out uh, uh, the plan for uh, the, the plan or solution or possibly the root of a problem of um, an issue. And then it's the, let's say one phase is done for a single problem that they have. And then we can move to talk about next issue or next problem. We can exchange role. So it's like never ending. Um, so- One at for, a time. One at a time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, I think is never ending. As long as you feel it is useful, you can continue to do it. Do you have any examples from your experience? We have a question from Cecilia and also from Alma. They were asking about, do you have any examples from your experience, from your CD sessions, if there's like a problem and a solution that you, that you dealt yes. with? So, uh, so I, the way I study a CD is, uh, is not like starting with a teaching problem. So I talked about uh, the research pro the such uh, the research um, proposal. Why I started the CD session, I'm struggling with my research topic. What to write about it? Um, so after four sessions, I try to find a way to um, to get a focus on this research topic. That's one of the benefits I get. But it's not like this CD session and giving a proposal to me. <laughs> it's like giving away what to do next, what to do next. Um, so I could mm -hmm. make a plan out of the CD sessions. And as an understander role, I also did with a teacher from uh, my country. I did it online. She also struggling with uh, like um, time, between time and the student engagement and interest, lack of interest. 
So after the session, she also uh, find a way to how to make her lesson to be um, interesting for her students. Yeah, that's two example I have done. Yeah. Good. So like you said, it's just creating that space and the time and the opportunity for you to, yeah. for you to talk about it. Yeah. Right. But I would say that it might not be for everyone. <laughs> Because when I when I introduce one of my friends, um, let's do this. Would you like to uh, do it? So uh, she said, no, she's not interested in it. She's not a kind of person who want to talk like this. So it might also depend on our personality, I think. <laughs> yeah. Good. I think that also links with a question from Sari. Um, okay. This is like, why, if there's any examples when teachers don't want to participate so much maybe yeah. you make a group and then they don't want to participate so much or do you have any advice about either how to encourage or what's a what might be a solution or a reason for that yeah like i said it depends on personality some some people are kind of not don't want to they don't want to talk about their own problem so in that case that this one might not be good for them and and but if they think it might be useful so the best thing to do is uh, like i said is that's why the role of an understander is really important i think because um the understander when the speak the, the understander show respect and sincere about uh his um show respect empathy empathize about what the speaker is saying then the speaker feels that oh the, he is caring about my problem. He's paying attention to me. So in that case, the speaker wants to talk more about the issue or problem. Yeah. Mm, but also, if you don't want to share about, you don't want to be the speaker, being the understander is also really yeah. important. Yeah, excellent point. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. We can change it, yes. Mm, yeah, so maybe you might get more encouragement from being the understander rather than being the speaker if you're not ready to. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Okay, we have maybe time for one more question, which is, do you have any more information or examples that you can share about this approach um, that we yeah. can share with anyone? Exactly, so, uh, uh, so can I, let me share my screen again. Uh, so it's like, okay. So if we go to the reference session, everything about cooperative development is initiated by Julian Arch. So uh, you might find his article uh, free to download. So cooperative development. So he also involved like very uh, easy to understand example, real example of doing this session. I like to suggest uh, go reading these uh, articles. Uh, they are freely available. Um, so it's better to read these uh, co cooperative development session by Julian Edge. There are also some uh, example has been done on uh, on YouTube, but I, I, when I'm trying to find, I couldn't find it again. So before the session, so. I'm not sure uh, these sessions are available there. <laughs> so the best way to do is uh, to read um, the article from Julian. Ed. It's not like academic article. So Julian is trying to ex uh, write in an informal way. So it's quite easy to read. <laughs> 